Okay, so let's start with the super quick revision of a new chapter that is place of supply. Uh, as you already know, under place of supply, whatever are the section numbers referred, these refers to uh, the uh, the reference is given to the IGST Act under unless uh, specifically given. Right now, uh, before we go ahead, what was the main purpose of this place of supply chapter? Yes, again, I'm telling you, this is a super quick revision. So, this is assuming you have studied it before, you have understood it before and now we are just going to revise it quickly. Okay. Now, we already know that GST is a consumption based tax, it is a destination based tax. So, generally the revenue should go to the uh, to that particular state government, to that particular government where the goods are ultimately going to get consumed. Right. Now, here we need to understand whether a particular supply is an interstate supply or whether it is an intrastate supply. For that, we need to determine the location of the supplier and we need to understand the place of supply location of the supplier and the place of supply okay so in this particular chapter we are going to understand the definition of location of supplier also and we are also going to determine in multiple cases we are also going to determine what is going to be the place of supply if this uh, location of uh, supplier and the place of supply if this is in the same state or union territory then it is going to be intrastate supply if these are in two different states or one state, one unit territory or two different unit territories, then in that case, it will be called as interstate supply. Are you clear with this? Yes. So, uh, that is told here in the introduction part of it. Then when we go ahead, okay, I am just scrolling in your notes itself. When we go ahead after that, all these things are given here. Okay. Then after that, now here they are telling that, yes, there will be some separate rules. Okay. There will be some separate rules whenever this, in some cases, okay, not in all cases, but in some cases, when the services are being provided to a registered person or when the services are provided to unregistered per, per, uh, person that we will understand when we do section number 10 and 12, you will understand when we are uh, doing that. Okay, then after that going to the next one that is a few definitions. Okay, a few relevant definitions. Now first definition is of continuous journey that we are going to use it in section number 12. Here they are telling that continuous journey is such a journey. Can you see this everyone here? It is such a journey for which there can be a single ticket or there can be separate ticket. Okay, single ticket or more than one ticket that is issued. But it is such a journey in which in between there should be no stop over that should have happened. Then such a journey will be called as a continuous journey. Stop over means there should be no break in between. Right. Then after that there was a definition of the term called as fixed establishment means one is your place of business okay place of business definition also we are going to do one is your place of business and apart from that if the operations are being carried on from or the service have been provided from some other place okay where there is a kind of permanency that is happening then such place will also be considered as your uh, fixed establishment okay that will be considered as your fixed establishment there you have human resources also that is employees etc also sitting you have got technical resources also to provide the services then such a place then such a place will be called as a fixed establishment right then after that then after that the next thing there is the next definition is of the location of recipient of service the person who is receiving the service okay what is there in that uh, what is the what is the location okay recipient of service you are aware about that what will be the location of the recipient if the service is received at my place of business then my place of bu business will become the location if the service have been received at my fixed establishment then in that case that uh, location of the fixed establishment will become the location of the recipient if service is being received at more than one place okay let's say at one place of business and let's say at fixed establishment then the place which is more directly concerned with receiving of that services and if in none of these places are present then the location of residence of the recipient will be considered as the location of recipient of that service right then uh, for that same way a summary chart or a table has been given here then after that the next one that is location of supplier okay same way location of the supplier that is if the supply is made from okay now suppliers if the supplier is if the supply is made from the place of business then that place of business will be considered as the location of the supplier if it is made from fixed establishment then location of the fixed establishment if it is made from more than one place then the place which is more directly concerned and if none of these are available if none of these are available, then in that case, location of the residence of the supplier will be considered as the location of the supplier. 
are you clear with this yes then talking about the place of business place of business will include place of business will include any such place from where normally we carry out the business including our go down warehouse etc then any such place where we maintain our books of accounts even that will be called as the place of business or any other place where or any other place through where we uh, engage ourselves into business either directly or through an agent okay directly was already covered in the first point or any place from where we are conducting the business through an agent even that will be considered as a place of business are you clear with this yes chalo then starting with the main provision section number 10 section number 10 talks about what section number 10 is going to talk about determination of place of supply in case of goods Okay, specifically it is going to talk about goods cases here and it is not going to talk about any cross border. It is not going to talk about import and export because that will be covered separately. Okay, so this is domestic transaction whenever there is supply of goods that is happening. Uh, that in that we are going to study five circumstances. First one, normal supply involving movement of goods. Next one, supply not involving movement of goods. Um, next one, build to ship to model. Next one is uh, uh, installation of the goods and the last one is goods supplied on board okay and for the residual cases we have got section number 10 2 okay for the residual cases we have got section number 10 2 now let's start with section number 10 1 first of all section number 10 1 talks about that this section we are going to refer when uh, when we have to determine the place of supply uh, other than import and export transaction within that section number 10 1 a talks about uh, supply of goods where movement uh, place of supply in case where supply involves movement of the goods so in that case the place of supply will be the location where the movement of the goods gets terminated okay the delivery gets terminated for delivery to the recipient that becomes that becomes the place of supply okay now this provision is not applicable okay this provision is not applicable when there is no movement of goods this was applicable only when there is movement of goods right then going to the next one we have got multiple examples given in our book you can just refer it now next one section number 10 1 be very very important section number also to be remembered when uh, there we are talking about the bill to ship to model that is when i am providing the goods i am supplying the goods to you okay my my contract was with you but then you told can you deliver it to the th can you deliver it to the other person yes so in that case i am billing to you but i am shipping to another person so they are telling that so they are telling that uh, the place of supply will not be to the other person to whom you have delivered the goods the place of supply will be the principal place of business with whom you have entered into the contract initially right uh, that is determined under section 101b but okay that is one supply then the you are the person with whom i had my original contract then you also entered into a contract with some other person that will also be considered as a supply but that will be considered as a supply under section 101a okay my contract with you for that the place of supply will be determined as per section 101b okay and uh, when you entered when you got a further order from another person that transaction will be determined under section number 101 right then after that then after that let's go to the next one that is section number 10 1 c everyone with me let's go to section number 10 1 c can you see section number 10 1 c in your books everyone yes 10 1 c talks about supply not involving movement of goods supply not involving movement of goods okay we have been taking example of this let's say i had leased you some goods okay goods are kept in your premises then i'm selling you the goods you can keep the goods so the place of supply will be the place where the goods are located at the time of delivery to the recipient can i say the goods are already at your location so that will be considered as the place of supply then going on to section number 10 1d 10 1d talks about what 10 1d talks about supply involving installation or assembly of the goods okay so if i am providing you the uh, supply of goods which needs to be installed or which needs to be assembled at a particular place so the place of supply will be the place of installation or the place of assembling the goods at that particular place okay then then going on to the next section that is section number 101e what is section number 101e 101e very very important many times repeated in the question answers also goods supplied on board a conveyance including vessel aircraft ship train motor vehicle etc okay whenever the goods are sold during a journey okay on any of these conve uh, conveyance then in that case the place of supply will be the place where the goods have been taken on board 
जहां से गुड्स को चढ़ाया है ठीक है दैट प्लेस विल बी कंसिडर्ड एज द प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई ड मैटर वेर यू आर सेलिंग द गुड्स ओके दैट इज टोटली इरेलीवेंट एंड लास्ट इफ योर सर्कमस्टांस इज नॉट फॉलोइंग अंडर एनी ऑफ दिस देन यू विल डिटरमाइन द प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई एज पर सेक्शन नंबर टेन टू ओके uh so uh, uh, as per section number 10 to they are telling that the supply of the place of supply will be determined in the prescribed manner okay that will be prescribed are you clear tell your yes in your textbook can you see summary is also given in between okay after the respective section summary is also given so that you can refer it okay then after that let's go to section number 12 can you see this everyone section number 12 what is section number 12 going to talk about section number 12 is going to talk about supply place of determination of place of supply in case of service okay section number 10 was talking about goods section number 12 is going to talk about service but where both of them location of the supplier and location of recipient both is situated here in india means section number 12 is going to become applicable okay now in this case section number 12 one says the same thing section number 12 one say, says the same thing that this section is going to be applicable for determination of place of supply where both location of supplier and location of recipient both are situated here in india in this we are going to study some specific provisions also some specific type of services also which are going to start from section number 12 3 okay which are going to start from section number 12 3 and it is going to go to section number 12 subsection 14 okay 12 3 to 12 14 specific services are covered if you are not falling under any of those specific services then the place of service uh, place of supply will be determined as per section number 12 2 okay it will be determined as per section number 12 2 so now let's understand what is this by default provision if you are not falling under any of the specific cases if any service is being provided to a registered person okay if it is provided to a registered person the place of supply is going to be the location of the recipient okay location of the recipient that is they are assuming that the supply is going to be consumed there so gst being a destination based consumption tax so the place of supply will be the location of recipient okay but what if the service is being given to an unregistered person so if we have the address of that person available place of supply will be his location of the address but if his address is not available then the place of supply will we do not have any details of the location of the recipient so location of supplier will be considered as a place of supply are you clear till here yes this is the by default provision under section number 12 2 okay at most of the cases what they have tried okay at most of the places they have tried to keep the location of the recipient as the place of supply because that's where the concept of gst lies right if that is not available then we are left with no choice then going on to the next section that is section number 12 3 super duper important repeated so many times in your exams section number 12 3 along with rule number 4 of the igst rules your any services provided in relation to immovable property that is any services provided by architect any services provided by interior decorator any services provided by engineer uh, surveyor etc but only in relation to immovable property real estate services etc provided or any services provided by way of giving the right to use immovable property for some functions events uh, uh, and all those things or any services provided by way of lodging or accommodation in any hotel in guest house club club clubs uh, campsite house boat etc or any services same suppose i want to you know uh, conduct any marriage functions if i want to conduct any office functions in any immovable property etc then services provided uh, for that in such cases in such cases what are they telling okay in such cases in all these cases they are telling that by default the place of supply will be the place where the locate where the immovable property is located or where the immovable property is intended to get located so location of the immovable property will be considered as the place of supply very clear with this okay now what if what if the location of immovable property is outside india okay then also this section will only be applicable if supplier and recipient both are in india then section 12 is applicable but if the property is located outside india then we cannot make the place of supply as uh, place outside india so in such case so in such case the place of supply will be the location of the recipient okay can you see this everyone the place of supply will be the location of the recipient very clear with this okay now 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 listen just try to understand just try to understand if the property is here in india 
okay if the property is here in india then the place of supply will be the location of that immovable property if the immovable property is located outside india then the place of supply will be the location of the recipient very clear with this okay now listen the problem arises when does, this is the summary table that is given for you okay now uh, after that everyone here yes what if what if there are multiple immovable properties okay or what if there is a uh, immovable property in multiple states or union territories okay or what if there is a single property which spreads across two or more states okay then in that case can we say there are many uh, states that are getting involved so the place of supply might get different so they are telling that okay let's say let's say if there is a road or if there that is also an immovable property let's say there is construction of road there is construction of highway which gets spread from that goes from one state to another let's say it is going from maharashtra to gujarat so can we say there are two states that are involved here so uh, how will you divide the value of service so uh, just go and refer the agreement or the contract and whatever amount is return okay they must have return some proportion na, that this much amount is charged for maharashtra this much amount is charged for gujarat so divide the service on that basis okay till here also it is okay but what if what if there is nothing written in the contract or agreement or what if there is no contract or agreement at all then this bifurcation has to be done as per rule number 4 of the IGST rules. Now what does rule number 4 tells us? Now let's say there is a particular service provider who is providing me the service of lodging accommodation. Let's say lodging accommodation in two properties which are situated in two different states. Okay, Taj Mumbai, Taj Jaipur, let's say for example. Then in that case, if nothing is specified in the agreement, then this value and that person has charged a consolidated figure from me. So, this consolidated amount will be divided on the basis of number of nights stayed in these two properties. Okay, next one, let's say, let's say there is a single property. Okay, and that property is situated on the border of Maharashtra and Gujarat. So, in that case, can we say the immovable property is located in two different states now? So, whatever amount of, uh, whatever is the value of service that will be divided between these two states on the basis of area of immovable property. Okay, area of immovable property, that is how much area is lying in Maharashtra, how much area is lying in Gujarat on that basis I am going to uh, divide it. Okay, similarly, what if I have been provided lodging accommodation? in a houseboat or in a vessel and that houseboat is going from Kerala to uh, like uh, from Kerala it for some time it is there in Kerala also and sometime it is there in Tamil Nadu also or uh, sometime in uh, Karnataka also Ex example okay so in that case can I say sometime it is in one state waters another time it is in another state waters okay so whatever the entire value will be divided in the ratio of time spent by the vessel in the respective states very clear with this okay okay now listen now let's go to the this was all about your section number 12 3 okay this was all about your section number 12 3 now let's go to the next section that is section number 12 4 12 4 talks about your uh, restaurant services restaurant services and catering services personal grooming services fitness services beauty health services etc then in such cases place of supply place of supply will be the place where the service have been actually performed okay makeup services etc we had taken th those example catering services wherever the, we are providing the catering services to that particular customer this is very very simple then section number 12 5 section number 12 5 talks about training and uh, performance appraisal services in that case uh, it depends whether the service have been provided to a registered person or service have been provided to an unregistered person if registered person we have got his address available so the place of supply will be the location of such recipient if that is not available then it means if the training have been provided to an unregistered person then in that case the place of supply will be the place where the service have been actually given or the ter uh, training has been actually imparted right then going on to the next section section number 12 6 12 6 talks about admission to the event any cultural event any uh, any such sporting event cultural event artistic event etc or uh, uh, entry to any amusement parks and all those so in such cases in such cases the place of supply is the place where the event is going to be held or the place where that park amusement park water park etc is situated right then going on to the next section that is section number 12 7 what is section 12 7 talking about it talks about organization of event that is someone is providing someone is organizing the event for me or someone is providing me event organization services 
okay then in such a case then in such a case if the service is provided to a registered person then in that case place of supply will be the location of recipient okay location of recipient irrespective of the fact whether the event is in india or the event is outside india because the service is given to a registered person but if the service is given to an unregistered person then in that case if the event is going to be held in india the place of supply will be the place of that event that is the place where the event is going to be held right but 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 if this event is going to be outside india in case of unregistered person okay in case of unregistered person if this event is going to be held outside india then you cannot keep the place of supply as outside india so then in that case what is going to happen then in that case the place of supply will be the location of the recipient can you see this okay uh, summary table is given in india outside india registered person or unregistered person yes okay then after that then after that can there be a possibility can there be a possibility that event is held in more than one state okay there is a single event organizer who is providing me services for events which are going to be held in multiple states so simple how do we divide the amount then just go and refer the contract or the agreement and divide it accordingly okay if there is no contract or agreement then they are telling that divided as per generally accepted accounting principles apply the rational uh, like rationally divide the amount between the two different states or union territories are you clear with this okay example can be example can be let's say how to apply generally accepted accounting principle let's say three events were held in one state and five events were held in another state so generally accepted accounting principle will be dividing the total amount in the ratio of 3 is to then after that going to the next section that is section number 128 okay section number 128 talks about transportation of goods transportation of goods including mail or courier i had given you the example of sending the parcels okay if the service if let's say delivery courier is providing a service to a registered person then the place of supply will be location of the recipient but if delivery service is providing service to an unregistered person let's say to my mother who wants to send rakhi to his brother then in that case the place of supply will be the place where the goods have been handed over okay when the goods have been handed over for transportation are you clear with this yes now what will happen okay now listen uh, there is a proposed amendment that is uh, introduced here okay uh, suppose if the goods are being transported outside india okay if the goods have been transported uh, to a place outside india till now there was a proviso that the place of supply will be the place of destination of such goods outside india okay in the amendment they have proposed that this proviso should be removed okay that is if the goods if i want to send my books outside india i am a registered person okay the place of supply will be location of the recipient okay and in case if if uh, the services have been given to an unregistered person and unregistered person wants to send some products outside india then the place of supply will be india only that is the place where the goods have been handed over for transportation basically in the proposed amendment they have planned to remove this entire proviso okay please refer the respective rtp to make sure whether this amendment is applicable or not as of now it is just proposed yes i will also inform you by way of amendment lecture then next one section number 129 section number 129 talks about passenger transport services okay in case of passenger transport services if uh, the service have been provided to a registered person give me the answer everyone if the services have been provided to a registered person the place of supply will be the location of the recipient okay but if the services have been given to an unregistered person then the place where that passenger embarks that is he starts his journey for a continuous journey okay if suppose in case of passenger transport if suppose um uh, a right has been given okay where uh, to use that particular transportation services where the service provider does not know the boarding point does not know the embarking point then in such case if the service have been given to a registered person no problem location of recipient will be the place of supply if the service have been given to an unregistered person normal person purchasing a metro card okay we don't know where the service is going to be utilized okay unregistered person is taking so if his address is available if his address is available then location of the registered person uh, location of that uh, recipient person okay and if his address is not available if his address is not available then in that case we are left with no option so the location of the supplier of service will be the answer very clear with this okay whenever there is a return journey i am going to delhi delhi to mumbai again okay this will be this will not be considered as a continuous journey this will be, this will be considered as two separate journeys there are you clear with this 
then after that section number 12 subsection 10 section number 12 subsection 12 simple services supplied on board just like we had done for goods supplied on board now services supplied on board then in that case for any particular person the place of supply is going to be the location of the first scheduled point of departure okay let's say the journey is going to be from mumbai to delhi to dubai okay i have availed those services in the last leg still the place of supply will be the first scheduled point that is the place from where the uh, that particular conveyance started that is mumbai right then after that then after that the next one that is section number 12 11 section number 12 11 talks about communication uh, telecommunication services in telecommunication we had divided into three parts first one was that fixed telecommunication line cable dth etc so for that the place of supply will be the location of uh, the installation of that particular device okay or the place where that telecommunication line or that leased circuit or that dth is installed that will be considered as the place of supply for any particular person okay then we discussed about postpaid in postpaid generally my address is there with the telecommunication service provider so the location of the billing address will become the place of supply right that is given here okay if by chance the address is not available then we are left with no option then the location of the supplier will become the place of supply but generally in case of billing the address of the recipient is available okay then about prepaid okay if prepaid vouchers are being sold by agents distributors etc then address of that selling agent address of that selling agent will be considered as the place of supply okay but if the voucher is sold by a grocery person means if the voucher is being sold by any person to the final subscriber then the place the location where such payment this prepayment is received right and if suppose if i do the prepayment if i do the prepaid if i do the recharge online by electronic mode then the location of recipient location of recipient which is available that will be the uh, place of supply are you clear with this yes so at most of the places wherever possible location of the recipient will be considered as a place of supply if that is not available worst case then only it will go to location of the supplier not otherwise okay then we had discussed about leased circuit if you remember okay uh, lease service generally lease circuit generally used by uh, mncs for uh, private network yes so if the lease circuit is installed in more than one state okay if it is installed in more than one state then you have to do the proportionate thing yes as per the contract or the agreement if nothing is given if nothing is given if nothing is given in the contract or agreement then that will be divided in the ratio of number of points of circuit right number of points of circuit in a particular state or unit territory let's say in maharashtra there is one point gujarat there is one point so this will be divided in the ratio of one is to one between maharashtra and gujarat are you understanding this yes then after that going on to the next section everyone with me everyone with me section number 12 12 section number 12 12 talks about financial and stock broking services okay in this case in this case the place of supply normally okay normally the place of supply will be the location of the recipient available in the books of the supplier however if his address is not known example we are using any banking service from such a bank where i do not maintain a bank account okay then in such case then in such case if we do not have the location of the recipient available then what option is available place of supply will be the location of the supplier of service then after that section number 12 13 in section number 12 13 we are talking about insurance services okay very very important what did i tell you in case of insurance services when the insurance company is providing us the service it will take our address so my address it is deemed that my address will always be available with the insurance company so the place of supply place of supply in case the services have been given to a registered person it will be the location of recipient okay if 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 these are provided to any person other than registered person the place of supply is the location of recipient of the service which is available with the supplier okay see in case of registered person my location will be address of the gst in okay if uh, in case of unregistered person look the place of supply will be location of recipient only but the location of recipient that is available with the supplier then after that harsh next big thing coming up section number 12 subsection 14 along with rule number 3 
when we have we have provided any advertisement service when we have provided any advertisement service to the government okay to the central government state government local authority statutory body etc then the place of supply will be each of those places wherever the advertisement has been displayed or advertisement have been shown okay then in such cases then in such cases can there be multiple states involved yes example advertisement on tv multiple states uh, viewers are seeing it okay advertisement by way of sms multiple telecom users are receiving uh, or seeing that particular sms right so just go and check the contract or the agreement divide the value of service in proportion to the uh, value as prescribed in the agreement means if in agreement it is written 20 percent is for maharashtra 20 percent is for Gizar, just divide it accordingly but the problem arises if nothing is written in the contract or the agreement okay so for that we will have to refer rule number three okay first one everyone here if suppose if suppose the advertisement was done in newspapers and publications etc so that has to be divided in the ratio of amount payable for respective states okay if we are providing the service to the government can i say government would have paid us the amount government would have paid us the amount some amount for a particular state some amount for another state so on that basis just divide the uh, total amount okay next one if the advertisement is done through printed material like pamphlets, brochures, uh, printing it on calendars, printing it on t-shirts, etc. Again, divided, the total amount will be divided on the basis of amount payable for distribution in respective states. Right? Next one. Advertisements done on holdings. Okay, big, 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 big holdings. But other than on trains. Okay, example, a big holding outside the railway station, a big holding outside the airport, a big holding on the highway, etc. Then in that case, again, here also. Can we say, uh, we, we would have put holdings in multiple states also? If it is in one state, then no problem. Okay, then no need to refer the rule also. Rule we have to refer only when multiple states are involved so the amount will be divided on the basis of amount payable for holdings of different different states okay now comes the problem okay fourth one that is advertisement on trains okay if advertisement on trains have been done uh, we have done it on behalf of the government then in that case government would have paid a consolidated amount this amount will be divided this amount will be divided in the ratio of length of railway track in each of the states or union territories let's say let's say delhi to let's say there is a train coming from delhi to goa can i say there will be many states coming in between so whatever is the length of railway track in each of the states in that ratio the entire amount will be divided ma'am from where will we get the length of the railway track indian railway.gov.in okay that website is going to provide you the same then if there is any advertisement done on the back of the utility bills like gas etc on gas bills etc you must have seen some advertisements of the government okay then in that case again the amount will be divided on the basis of amount payable for each state or unit territory okay then advertisement of railway ticket again important on railway ticket if there is any government's advertisement then this amount will be divided in the ratio of number of in the ratio of number of railway stations ratio of number of railway stations in each of such state or union territory let's say government has told that let's say government has told that all the railway tickets which are sold okay all the railway tickets which are sold from maharashtra uh, on that we are going to put an advertisement okay and now and now just try to understand okay just try to uh, understand uh, there is a particular railway ticket okay there is a particular railway ticket that will be sold from maharashtra okay in that case in that case whatever is the uh, uh, let's say it is maharashtra government says that all the tickets sold from maharashtra and gujarat okay for that uh, the advertisement should be printed so whatever are the number of railway stations in maharashtra is to the railway stations in gujarat in that particular ratio the bifurcations will be done okay then if the advertisement is done on the radio stations the radio stations is easily bifurcable because uh, let's say if advertisement is done in Mumbai's railway uh, radio station and uh, let's say Ahmedabad's radio station. So that will be easily determinable. So that goes on the basis of amount payable. That is how much amount is payable to Mumbai FM and how much amount is payable to Ahmedabad FM. 
then next one again super duper important advertisement on television channels okay if uh, advertisement have been done on television television channels by the government which runs or which is shown in multiple states then in that case then in that case the um, amount will be divided amount will be divided in the ratio of number of viewers of that particular channel in respective states okay ma'am from where will we get the number of viewers don't worry b a r c broadcast audience research council they will give you the this 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 broadcast audience research council they will give you the number of viewers ma'am number of viewers can change from day to day week to week month to month so which number of viewers will we take we will take we will take the number if the supply is done during the current quarter we will take the numbers we will take the numbers of viewers of the last week of the last quarter okay last week of the last quarter that will be your number of viewers and let's say number of viewers in maharashtra is uh, 5000 and example uh, and number of viewers in gujarat is let's say 10000 so the amount will be divided in the ratio of 5000 and 10000 okay now let's say brc is giving me viewership figures for a particular region okay it is giving me a combined figure for um, let's say mumbai and other parts of maharashtra or let's say it is giving me a combined figure for maharashtra and goa maharashtra and goa okay but i want it separately for maharashtra i want it separately for goa but brc is giving me combined figure so just divide this combined figure in the ratio of population as per the latest census so now you will be having figures for maharashtra you will be having the figures for goa and you will be having the figures for gujarat are you clear till here yes then after that then after that many examples are given a detailed example is given you can refer it if you wish to then advertisement in cinema, cinema halls let's say uh, advertisement is done in every show of pvr so pvr can be there in multiple states where the advertisement will be run so whatever is the amount payable to respective pvr in that ratio the amount will be divided then again important advertisement on internet if the government is doing any advertisement on internet it is assumed that the ad is run all over india so how do we divide it in so many states so it will be dependent upon the number of internet subscribers in each state okay number of internet subscribers from where will we get that information that information will be given by tra telecom regulatory authority of india ma'am which days figure will we take you will take the figure of the last quarter for determining the proportions for the current quarter yes and again if tri gives you region wise figure and that region involves more than one state if tri is giving you the figure for maharashtra and goa together and if i want to do the bifurcation do it on the basis of population of the latest census right and the last one okay just remember one more thing ah just remember one more thing when we were doing about cable okay or when we were doing about tv we took the number of viewers for the last week of the last quarter okay when we are doing it for this thing internet we are taking the number of internet subscribers internet subscribers of the last quarter okay total total number of internet subscribers in the last quarter and then the next one advertisement through sms last one okay your also uh, advertisement through sms means sms will be going to multiple subscribers multiple mobile users over different states so this amount will be divided on the basis of number of telecom subscribers number of telecom subscribers uh that figure will be given to us by the tri and this figure will be again of the last quarter for determination of the figures for the current one okay so you will take the number of telecom subscribers of the last quarter and if the tri is giving you figures for a particular region and if you if that region has more than one state then that figure will be divided in the ratio of population we have also done examples okay in our main lectures also we have done the in the full lectures also we have done the examples everyone are you clear with this yes and at the end of it at the end of it i'll just show it to you yes at the end of it the summary of the entire section has been given for again for your revision are you clear till here everyone yes can we proceed ahead yes after your revision uh in your book you have got your section number 7 8 and 9 section number 7 basically talks about interstate supply that is when the supply will be supply of 
supply will be considered as interstate supply. So section 71 says that supply of goods will be considered as interstate when the location of the supplier and the place of supply is located in two different states or two different union territories or one state and one union territory then it will be called as interstate supply okay then section number 72 section number 72 was talking about import transaction when the goods are supply of goods are imported into the territory of india till they cross the custom barriers of india then that will be considered as supply of goods in the course of interstate supply and in that along with custom duty your igst will be applicable then section number 73 section number 73 just like 71 and 72 was talking about goods 73 and 74 is going to talk about services so if the supply in case of supply of service supply of service will be considered as interstate supply of service when the location of the supplier and the place of supply is located in two different states two different unit territories or one state and one union territory right then next one section number seven four section number seven four was talking about import of service into india okay there you cannot say till the time it crosses the custom barriers supply of service intangible okay so in that case supply of service which is imported into the territory of india will be treated as supply of service in case of inter in in the course of interstate supply are you clear with this yes so in this case generally what happens is if the supplier is located outside india recipient is there here in india place of supply is here in india so it will be called as import of service very clear with this and then section number seven five what is section number seven five talking about very specific section it is basically talking about export of uh, supply uh, it can be applicable for both goods and services when i am there you are in india okay i am here in india and i am supplying any goods or services to any person who is located outside india then this will be called can we say supplier is in india location of recipient is outside india place of supply is also outside india so this gets covered in your kind of export of goods or services definitely it has to fulfill the other requirements given under the definition of export also but this will be called as what this will be called as interstate supply okay next one very very important okay next one any supply done to a scz okay scz will be located here in india okay if in india it is located in the same state okay i am here in maharashtra i am giving the supply to a scz which is also located in maharashtra but it will be deemed as interstate supply okay any supply given to scz or any supply given by scz okay supply of goods or supply of service that is deemed to be an interstate supply okay you will face confusion okay you will face confusion if they have given you an example that uh, you are situated in mumbai maharashtra scz is also situated in mumbai maharashtra and you are giving them supply of goods or services doesn't matter okay even if it is maharashtra maharashtra but you are giving it to scz okay scz is considered as outside india so this will be considered as interstate supply and therefore igst is going to be applicable are you clear with this yes and any supply of goods and services in taxable territory but which is not getting covered under intrastate supply that we will study in the next section okay if it is not getting covered under intrastate supply then in that case then in that case it is a residuary provision therefore they are treating it as interstate supply itself very clear with this yes similarly they have given you section number eight also section number eight talks about intrastate supply okay it talks about intrastate supply that is when the location of the supplier and the place of supply both is in the same state or union territory then it will be considered as intrastate supply in that section number eight to one which talks about supply of goods okay supply of goods where the location of the supplier and the place of supply is in the same state or union territory then such supply will be called as intrastate supply but 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 three cases three cases will never be called as intrastate supply even if both of them are in the same state or union territory one is we have already studied scz mumbai to scz mumbai okay even though even though it both of them are in the same state still since it is given to scz it will not be considered as intrastate it will be deemed as interstate under section number seven okay next one goods imported into the territory of india till they cross the till they cross the custom frontiers of india let's say i imported the goods via mumbai port and then i am getting it into my mumbai office doesn't matter okay you are getting it from mumbai port to mumbai office doesn't matter the goods have been actually imported and import was already considered as an interstate 
supply okay and the last one when you are supplying any goods to a foreign tourist okay you are supplying any goods to a foreign tourist at that time okay that will never be considered as the intra state supply you all a tourist means what any person is normally not going to stay a year in india he has come to india for a vacation is going to stay in india for a maximum period of 6 months and if you are supplying any goods to him even though the supply is done within the same state okay the tourist is standing outside your office and you are supplying him then that will not be that will never be considered as intra state supply that will always be considered as inter state supply and you have to apply igst very clear with this okay then going on to section number 82 section number 82 similar section talking about the services okay that was talking about the services same 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 to same provision that is applicable okay and yes if you have provided any services also to scz then that exception will be applicable wherever you see scz it will be considered as interstate supply very clear till your okay and the next one everyone here the next one whenever whenever um, you are providing any supply to an, your establishment of distinct persons okay if you are providing any uh, service to establishment of distinct person maybe it is located here in india or maybe it is located in the same state or maybe it is located in other state or maybe it is located outside india that will always be considered as intra state okay do not consider it as export let's say it is located outside india please do not consider it as an export because we have uh, uh, because uh, that is totally excluded from the definition of export okay uh, and uh, then after that there was a small circular that if accommodation services for uh, lodging accommodation services for conduct of any conference etc if that service have been provided to scz then which provision will apply so general provi uh, specific provisions will always override the general one so if the services have been given to scz then that is always considered as interstate supply and therefore the service provider is required to apply igst on such service right and the next one last one that is section number 9 section number 9 talks about supplies done in territorial waters if the location of the supplier or the place of supply if either of it is in the territorial waters okay then we have to check which state's territorial water is it okay now for example for example if the location of the supplier okay or let's say if the place of supply if the place of supply is in the territorial waters then you have to check which state is having the nearest appropriate baseline okay let's say if some uh, services are provided in waters okay and there is maharashtra waters also and there is goa waters also then you have to check then you have to check the what will be the place of supply so the nearest point okay nearest point of the appropriate baseline that is if mumbai baseline is near or goa baseline is near or maharashtra baseline is near or goa baseline is near you have to check that if suppose maharashtra baseline is near then the place of supply will be considered to be maharashtra are you clear with this yes so till your acha and after that the proposed amendment thing is written that we have already discussed in case of that was applicable in case of transportation of everyone are you clear till your yes okay so let's start with the amendments of place of supply chapter basic provisions we had already considered uh 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 uh, uh. come to yes in section number 10 in section number 10 uh we had discussed about place of supply of goods okay we had uh, in section number 10 it was about goods and that too other than import export okay in that we had studied various sections subsections etc in that one new point has been inserted that is section 10 1 clause ca okay one was normal where it involved movement of goods then where there was no movement of goods involved then in case of bill to ship to model etc we had considered there now section 10 1 ca very simple provision now here they are talking about place of supply of goods which is purchased over the counter okay over the counter in one state and transported to another state okay transported to another state by the buyer now what do you mean by this what do you mean by this now let's say i am sitting i am here in maharashtra okay i go as a tourist okay i go as a tourist to gujarat let's say for example and from there from a particular shop i buy some goods 
okay i buy some goods from there and then i put it in transport for maharashtra for my place again okay so now can we say i am just traveling to the other place there i am over the counter i am randomly going to a shop i am purchasing some goods from there and then i am transporting it back i am okay buyer is transporting it to the to its own state now in this case what will the shopkeeper do okay what will be the place of supply for the supplier in such cases he has given the goods in his own state okay but ultimately the goods are going to some other state can we say the supplier sold the goods in the state of gujarat only right but ultimately the goods are getting transported to maharashtra so what will be what will be the place of supply in such cases what will be the place of supply in such cases okay so in this case they are telling that in such case now can we say the sale is going to be to an unregistered person okay in such a case they are telling that where the address of the unregistered person is recorded in the invoice okay when i am going and purchasing it when i say that okay i am from maharashtra and if he is writing maharashtra in the invoice that he is giving then in that case location is maharashtra place of supply is going to be maharashtra in such a case okay but where i am not telling him that i am from maharashtra okay that is my address is not recorded in the invoice then in that case then we are left with no other option then the place of supply will be the location of the supplier that is gujarat in our example are you clear with this okay and in this case and in this case simply mentioning the state of unregistered person in, yes he need not ask the full address from me because i am an unregistered person he can just take my state okay if he ask me arpita what is your state from where are you ultimately where are you going to take this goods i say that i am from uh, maharashtra so if he writes maharashtra in the invoice then the place of supply will be maharashtra okay but if he is just writing sales made to arpita okay then in such a case then in such a case the place of supply will be the location of the supplier that is gujarat okay this is a practical thing this is a very practical issue which many people used to face so for that now this provision has been inserted are you clear everyone yes this was one particular new uh, provision that was inserted then after that the next provision next amendment okay this we have already considered okay this we have already considered section number 128 okay where it was talking about transportation of goods remember uh, it was first of all it is talking about place of uh, place of supply in case of services okay services was provided by way of transportation of goods to a if it was provided to a registered person okay delivery is providing me the service of transportation of goods i am a registered person location will be my place that is location of the recipient okay the person who is receiving this particular service but when the services are provided to the unregistered person then the place of supply was the place where the goods are handed over for transportation this we had studied okay in that there was a proposed amendment that what if the transportation of goods is going to take place outside india then they had earlier told that the place of supply will be the place of destination of such goods that is outside india but now they have totally cut that note and they are telling that nothing doing okay you don't have to see where the goods are going to go you just have to see the whether the person is a registered person to whom you are providing the service of transportation or that person is an unregistered person that much is sufficient and on that basis and on that basis we will determine what will be the place of supply okay example example let's say there is a delivery company called as delhivery okay delhivery is providing the services to arpita okay because arpita wants to send some goods to usa okay then in that case where i am sending the goods is totally irrelevant okay delivery is providing the service to a registered person so place of supply will be the location of such uh, recipient are you clear with this we are not concerned where the goods are going are you clear with this this we had already considered in the lecture so but now this is the confirmed amendment applicable for the examinations so here is the example also given for that then after that the next one yes now there was a clarification okay there was a clarification which they have brought for the purpose of advertising sector okay for the purpose of advertising sector do you recollect for advertising uh, services provided to government okay when the services were provided to government for that we had seen a big thing if you recollect section number 
Do you recollect advertisement services provided to government? And then we were doing that proportionate value when depending upon the type of advertisement that was done. Okay, now here they are talking about normal advertisement, not specifically provided to the uh, government. Now see what are they telling? They have raised two issues for which they have provided some clarification. See if you can understand this. Okay, now listen. Now they are telling that advertising companies are often involved in procuring, acquiring space on hoardings, billboards, big billboards, hoardings, etc., which are erected on building land in different states from different suppliers for providing advertising services to its clients. Okay, now let's say there is an advertising company. Okay, let's say there is an advertising company and which approaches me. Okay, I am the client which approaches me that, okay, Arpita, we can provide you advertisement services. Okay, I ask them, I ask them that, where will you put my hoarding? So, they say that we have got some space on the terrace of this building. Okay, we have got some space on uh, that particular highway. You must have seen, na? So, now, this space, this space actually doesn't belong to the advertisement company. Okay, let's assume, let's assume that this space belongs to some third person, that is to some vendors. Okay, example, uh, many, in many cases, the hoardings are put on the buildings also. So, the building does not belong to the advertisement company. Okay, the building belongs to that cooperative society who is going to provide the space to the advertisement company to provide the advertisement services. Right? So, now in this case, now what is the issue which arised in this case? Now, they are asking what will be the GST structure in this case or how will you determine the place of supply in this case? Okay, so now they are asking a question to us here. There may be a case wherein there is a supply of space or supply of rights to use that space who is going to give this supply who is going to give the right to whom vendor this vendor is going to give the right to that advertisement company to use that space and put the client's advertisement there right so which is that space is belonging to the vendor and which we are giving it to the advertisement company for display of their advertisement. Now here they are asking what will be the place of supply. Like will the place of supply will be the location of the vendor or will it be of the advertisement company? Will it be of the client or will it be the place where that advertisement is done? What will be the place of supply? So for that they are telling that since you are using an immovable property, Okay, building, land, etc. Since you are using an immovable property to provide such service, then in that case, for this, you will have to go and refer section number 12.3. 12.3 was the place of supply uh, where you are using the immovable property. Services supply directly in relation to an immovable property. In that case, the place of supply was the location at which such immovable property is located. Okay, so the place where that, uh, you know, hoarding is going to be fixed, that place will be called as the place of supply. Are you clear with this? So, the place of supply will be the location where such hoarding or structure is located. Normal, logical also. Yes, now in that only they got another issue. Okay, what was this another issue? Now, let's say, let's say, there is another case where the advertising company wants to display its advertisement on hoardings or billboards at a specific location availing the services of a vendor. Now, there is a vendor who is having that space. Okay, there is an advertisement company who is having a client. Client tells to the advertisement company that I want to use that hoarding and I want to put my advertisement there. Okay, advertisement company approaches the vendor and it tells to the vendor, it tells to the vendor that please put my client's advertisement there. Okay, please put my client's advertisement there. This is told by whom to whom? This is told by advertisement company to vendor. Now, in this case, you know what is happening? Everything, everything is the responsibility of the vendor. Okay, this advertisement company is kind of acting like an agent only. Okay, everything is going to be arranged by that vendor. That location will be arranged by that vendor. You know, making of that poster, displaying the ad there, every work, every work will be done by the vendor. So, can we say this is normal? This is not related to immovable property now. Can we say vendor is going to provide the services to the advertisement company? Yes, and there is no 
uh, agreement for use of a particular immovable property or for supply of space there is no such uh, agreement what was happening in the previous issue we were just talking to the vendor that i want your place okay rest things i will do but here i am not talking to the vendor about the place i am talking i am telling to the vendor that my client's advertisement should go there so here they are telling that since this does not pertain to immovable property section 123 is not applicable here okay section 123 is not applicable therefore this will be normally covered under the by default provisions by default provisions which is given under section number 12 do you recollect by default provisions if place of supply is not mentioned in any of the uh, sub sections then in that case you have to determine the place of supply as per section number 12 so you have to check that that particular agreement is about what is it about directly providing the advertisement service or is it about acquiring the space for doing the advertisement if it is relating to acquiring the space then it is supply of immovable services related to immovable property if not the normal section number 122 becomes applicable then are you understanding this everyone yes okay yes so are you clear till here everyone done